And Mr. Richard, you have two minutes, but I'm going to allow you some indulgence. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, the first thing I want to address is he's avoiding Article 31 is very, very clear. Shall, right? The legislature shall address, or shall assemble for redress of public grievances. And clearly, up until 1818, this was a regular practice. The practice remained in the statutes until 1925. So I know that the, uh, the, the analysis, the redress analysis, isn't a legally binding instrument, but there's no case law in this case. The defense states in their pleadings that there's no relevant case law here, right, to right to remonstrance. They are correct. I couldn't cite any state case law. And so that's why my brief was more of a historical uh, brief based on, on previous usage and custom. I can only rely on the Constitution. The House and Senate journals is preserved by the historical records in the state archives and the usage and customs recorded therein, verified by the legislature's own legal scholar. Contrary to the defense statements otherwise, Exhibit F, the redress analysis, confirms the House and Senate journals, which detail the fact that for more than 200 years and more than 18,000 petitions were submitted. And, and by the way, the big difference here between petition and remonstrance, remonstrance is the application to the legislature to repeal a law, not to make a law. They want to exclude the people from their house, from the state house, over the issue of only making law. That what they're advocating is the only solution they want to offer we the people is the ability to make law as a solution, a legislative process. And to your point, uh, Judge, that what good is the text if there's no application of it, right? What good is my rights if they've just summarily been removed? Now, I'll grant the practice hasn't happened in a long time. The archives show that there are 51 remonstrances, and the last one applied was in 1825. That's a long time. And Mr. Cianci, in some respects, is correct. The practice didn't fall out of favor. I would say that the problem really is apathy and ignorance of the law. That's what's happened to our society in many, many ways. So we don't have an educated citizenry electing smart legislators, and this is a problem. And this is how I believe the process fell out of favor. Your, your red light is on, but you may proceed for another minute or so. Um, to the federal issue and the cases they want to cite, there's no federally protected right to remonstrance in the First Amendment. The U.S. Constitution to redress state public grievances. So all the citation, every case they cite was predicated on someone invoking the First Amendment. The First Amendment right to petition doesn't grant any of the same rights granted by the state, nor is there any usage in customer case law. And so I believe that the state, the defense has misapplied, and all, their, all the cases that they cite here are all based on federal First Amendment cases that failed, well, including they, they the other cases. they also cite the, the uh, Tennessee case that was correct. decided in 2020, and I believe Mr. Cianci is correct. The language there, the operative language was functionally identical, if not identical to the language here. Why is that case wrongly well, first of decided? All, yeah, the language, uh, great question, Judge. Uh, language in, the, in that case, in the Gentry case, yes. the state constitution of Tennessee is not like New Hampshire. Our constitution and the provisions in it are much stronger. We have Articles 30 and 31 ten, that Tennessee does not have. And Mr. Gentry, in error, cited the First Amendment right to, read, uh, the First Amendment right to petition. And so that's why I would argue that that case doesn't apply, because he's seeking a remedy under the First Amendment. And finally, the opinion of this court, I think, really summarizes this case. You, this is the opinion that you gave in Burt. The legislature, because of the, of the rulemaking issue, the legislature may not, even in the exercise of its absolute internal rulemaking authority, violate constitutional limitations. Indeed, no branch of state government can lawfully perform an act which violates the Constitution. Therefore, any legislative act violating the Constitution or infringing on its provisions must be void because the legislature, when it steps beyond its bounds, acts without authority. And that's exactly what they did here. They want us to not have access to this process. And I'll, I'll close with this. Write a revolution in the Bill of Rights. Our state is unique in that feature. It has one key caveat, right of redress. Right? When all effective means of redress are no longer effectual, the people have a right to throw off their government and start a new one. And that's where we're at now because this is the last stop.
stop. And so that's why those rights were so, why is the redress process so important? Because all of our rights emanate from that very process. When you stop that process, you kill the, the Republican form of government. Thank you. Thank you very much. Case submitted. Court is adjourned. For the record, the Chief Justice is disqualified.